guys, and welcome to our typical Friday broadcast. If you guys have never tuned in before, I'm Angela, and I'm here with Dan. Hello, everybody. And we have a special treat for you guys today. So we've been talking for the past several weeks about the next Witcher Studio update, which will have video insertion, camera controls, muting, new interface, everything like that. And we are happy to announce that it is currently available for download from the App Store. So as of now, all you guys have to do is go into the App Store, just update it, and you'll have access to all of those new features. Now, what we're going to do in this broadcast is we're going to discuss all of the updates for the new Switcher Studio 3.0, and at the end, we'll also let you guys in on a special treat. So the first thing I want to discuss is video insertion. Now, this is one that's been the most asked question since we started mentioning it. When is video insertion going to be in the app? Again, it's currently in. There are some things to remember, though. The first, if you're trying to get the video from a photo stream or iCloud, it's not going to come in that way. It's going to have to be saved to your camera roll, and then you'll be able to insert it from your camera roll just the way you are with a graphic at this time. Now, when you click on it, it's going to start auto-playing. Um, what will happen is you won't hear the volume of the video. You'll be able to see it on the interface but it won't play like on the actual Switcher Studio. And that's just to keep it from, you know, kind of jumbling up, to keep it from getting that audio feedback, which can be really nasty. So your audience will hear the video audio, you just will not hear the video audio. And the other cool thing that'll happen is you'll notice there's now a mute button on the new interface. And this means if you want to mute everyone in the studio so your audience only hears the audio from the video, you can hit that mute button and that way only the video audio will play. Now if you want to do commentary over the video, by default it's not going to be muted of course, so you can still do that commentary at any time. And also you can use mute at any point you want, so even if you're not running a video, if you just want to mute before or after the stream starts, you can do that as well at any time. Time. Now, one thing we do want to warn you guys about, Facebook strongly advises against uh, using like a pre-recorded video as a live broadcast. So what that means is do not do a live, uh, do not do a pre-recording and then try to do that live. Make sure it's an actual live video. The video insertion should only be used for, you know, little clips you want to show, maybe an intro reel, an outro reel. Do not try to fake your live broadcast by just putting it all uh, a video and trying to make that live. Facebook wants to have that interaction with the comments and likes. So we do advise against that. You can get in trouble with your account if you try to cheat that process. But one other thing that the new Switcher Studio update has is we do have a new interface. Now, a lot of you guys noticed in the past when you're using an iPhone or an iPod Touch as your main switcher, you weren't able to have all the controls. And that has now changed. And Dan is going to go over some of what's changed with that. Yes, but before we get to that, I just want to touch on the video insertion. Um, Angela mentioned your videos have to be on the camera roll, and that can be kind of tricky sometimes to get to. Um, I know a lot of people have been using Google Drive to bring their pictures in, and that is a great way to do it, but the video, it's a little trickier. It doesn't really, you can't just download straight to your camera roll. I would recommend using Dropbox. Dropbox is great. You know, you can get a free account and a couple gigs of storage there, so that's one really good way to do it. Or if you have a Mac computer, Airdrop is another great way. So we're going to have a blog post with, uh, to help you all do that. But for now, you know, I would <coughs> recommend Dropbox or the Airdrop if you can do it. So yes, the new UI. Let's, let's look over. So uh, do you have my screen up? Is, yes, we're going to go ahead and cool. cue Let that me in. go to my... So some of you have been using Switcher Go. This might look a little familiar to you. Um, again, the video you're seeing might be a little laggy, and that's just because we're capturing it through QuickTime, and, um, and when you do that, you know, we, we're going to drop some frames, but your videos are going to look great with Switcher, Switcher Studio. So all right, let's go over this. Um, just like in Go, the star down here is where you're going to go to add your um, graphic elements. So right now I've got these two pictures in that we can cut between. 
Also, now we can go to videos the same way as Switcher Go, and you know, here's a video we did with Dave from Myographer out at um, Summit Live, so we can go ahead and tap that, and there's Dave talking. And of course, that's going to go live until it's stopped or it's till it's done, and it's going to give us a black screen, or we can go ahead and tap to a different one. So those are some of the old or new features in Switcher Studio that were kind of there and go. Now let's go over this multi view that's really cute, really cool. So right now, where it says number of sources there, I can choose that. I'm going to stick with the two, and let's say I choose dashboard. I kind of get a view of what it's going to look like. I can hit done. So now if I tap on that. Uh, that dashboard I can choose my two angles here we go and just like that I can have a two up and let's say I wanted to switch that picture out I can choose this other one and go say go to a so now we switch that picture and of course I can then tap it and go back to solo so that's kind of a quick view of how you're going to do your your new multi views in switcher studio on the iOS or on the iPhones of course, you can also have those camera controls that are there with, um, with Switcher Go. They're still there. The mute button that Angela was talking about is there. We can tap that, and that's going to work great for us. Uh, change your camera. You know, Everything's going to be there. So for those of you who don't have an I iPad and just have the iPhones, iPod Touches, you can do a full Switcher setup now. Okay, and speaking of Dave Basulto from uh, Iographer, we mentioned that we do have a special treat for you guys today. Dave has recently come out with a book just helping with mobile video creation using iOS devices. We got to talk to him at Summit Live last week, and he actually gave us a signed copy of his new book that we're going to give away. Now, the way we're going to do this, in the comments below, whoever is the first person to tell us the name of Dave's book, you're going to win that signed copy. So again, you know, if you know the name of his book, drop that in the comments below, and that way you'll be able to have your very own signed copy of the new book from Iographer. Okay, and Dan, are there any interesting questions that have come up, whether it's me, about 3.0 or... Yeah, let me uh, get on there. I know people are having a lot of problems with uh, the video insertion. Well, not a lot of problems, but just, you know, had a lot of questions like length and, and format and all that stuff, which most formats should be fine. Yeah, the majority of video formats you'll be able to use without any problem with the new 3.0 update. Again, just the main thing people have been running into problems with is not having them on the camera roll. As long as you've got that video on the camera roll, you'll be able to insert most formats without any issue. Cool. Well, my computer is locking up here, so... Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to even see the stream right now. Okay. okay. Yeah, what we'll do for you guys, just the way we do every week with any remaining comments, any questions that you guys have or comments you have, go ahead and leave those in the comment section. After the stream's over, we'll be able to go ahead and jump in and answer any of the questions that you guys have. And again, as we've been mentioning in the past couple of weeks, we are very impressed with the new Switcher Studio Enthusiast group we have. It's very active, very engaging. People are sharing a lot of tips and tricks in that group. So again, if you guys haven't joined already, there's still a pinned link on our page. Make sure to go into the group, choose join group. In the description, there's going to be a post that says fill out a short survey. It just helps us help you guys. It lets us know how you're using Switcher, where you're uploading your videos to, just little things like that so we can help make this even bigger and better for you. After we get notified that you've done the survey and you've hit join group, You'll be accepted into the group. We've got, I think, about 150 users at this point that are in the group. And it's very nice. It's very active. If you guys have any questions, you can even throw it in the group. And a lot of people will help you out with their yes. own experiences. So I do have the stream up now here. Okay. So um, I see one person asking, what's the difference between Studio and Pro? They're, I, like Nick said, I think he answered it there. They're the same thing. Um, that's what you're going to get. And then someone else asked if we can detail the gear we have here. Um, I can go over quickly our, our setup. Probably one of these next uh, future shows, we're going to kind of show you everything. We've got a really cool way to do a, a 
one tripod set up with three cameras, but to go over quickly, what we're doing is we have an iPad Pro, the 9.7 is here. Um, and you can, <laughs> is Nick gonna? Yeah. Well, sure, yeah, we've got, good. we got Nick sitting here behind the, behind the scenes, so yeah. we might Switch get some Cloverfield <laughs> shaky cam here, but uh, yeah, so there's our iPad Pro, and it's just on a little table tripod. I think that's an UltraPod is what it's called. Um, super cool, they got the Velcro so you can Velcro it down, and of course the Iographer case, super good. Um, over here is my MacBook that we're using. Oh, first, I guess we're down here. So this is an <laughs> iRig Pro we're using to get audio. And if Nick, if you zoom up here, here's our mic right here. So it's just a shotgun mic pointed at the two of us. Um, we got headphones back here that I was monitoring earlier with. Um, let's see what else we got. So using the MacBook Pro or Air Mac, MacBook Air, I should say, to uh, check comments that you guys are leaving and also doing the screen sharing with my phone, which is here again on another table tripod. And then back here, the phone Nick's holding is an iPhone 6. We've got a couple lights and then an iPad Air as our other camera. So that's just a quick run through of the setup we have here in, in studio that we use. Um, the, the device has changed depending on what we have out at the time or what people are holding on to. So, um, yeah, that's kind of our, that's kind of the quick down and dirty of our, uh, of our, of our set. The other thing I guess you can show maybe is we have down here is our brick. We just have a little, um, power brick that can plug in four or five different USB devices. So that's how we're charging all of our devices. So that's, yeah, that's just a quick run through of that stuff. Yeah. And as Dan mentioned on one of our future streams, we'll go over, you know, some more kind of detailed looks at the different gear we use, especially depending on the different kind of broadcast that we'll be doing at that time. Um, we're also going to be doing one just to help you guys get started with, you know, <coughs> streaming on YouTube and other sources. So we're going to have a lot more informative uh, live streams coming to you guys soon just on the Friday show 2 p.m. Eastern 11 a.m. Pacific but again if you guys haven't done so already as soon as this broadcast is over you can go to the App Store you can update to 3.0 and you can start using the features we talked about today immediately I think that's it yeah I think that's it for today again thank you guys so much for watching and for your support Remember, you can join the group by hitting join group and filling out the short survey. And again, any questions you guys have, leave them down below, and we'll be happy to check those out and answer them after the broadcast. Take care. See you guys next week.